All right, why don't we get started? We'll call the meeting to order at 7.03. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? All right, hearing none. Uh, is there any public comment at this time? Okay, move to the consent agenda. Um, we have the minutes of Tuesday, August 20th, um, the regular and the special, and then the minutes of Tuesday, September 10th, the special. I'd entertain a move, motion to approve those, either individually or together. Motion to approve all the minutes on the August 20th, regular and special, and September 10th special. Second. Any discussion on that? All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Um, another chance for public comment, if anybody would like to chime in. Um, or we'll go to board comment. So any board comment? Okay, I'd just like to say I'm really glad to see the student representative here, so thanks for being here. Great that you're able to join us. All right, um, on to the celebration of learning. All right. And I gave Ray a video of our school. I don't know if you had that on there. There we go. Yeah, so this is our high school recruiting video that we came up with. We started. Yep, all set. It's, it's not just a word, right? I want our kids to feel that, like to know that we believe in them that every teacher believes in them and what they're capable of doing. And I also want each student to believe in themselves. And I think if you have that belief system, then I think a school could be really successful. You know, I always say that you have to have a good match for a school, right? It has to be something that connects with you. And I, I think our school connects with a lot of different students. Um, we have a, an amazing performing arts program, our music department and drama department and our athletics, our academics. We offer a lot of AP classes. Our teachers are top notch. We have teachers that care about every kid and want the best for them. White River Valley High School has a wide range of opportunities um, in my personal realm, Flexible Pathways. We do it in a way that very few other schools do it. We have a wider set of possibilities within it. And really our answer is, yes, we can do that. So I think if I had a student um, who, could, who was going to high school, I would absolutely want them here for that reason alone, even to be able to access this kind of thinking, because I believe everyone should be able to. It's not just for one category of student or another. Flexible Pathways is for everyone at every grade level, every kind of learner. That's actually the very purpose of it. You know, any sort of event that the, the school puts on, you can count on the community being there and supporting, and, and it's stuff that people look forward to, you know, even if they've, the alumni specifically, if they've been graduated 5, 10, 20 years, like, they all come back for things, and it's, it's a very special place in that, that capacity. It's kind of like the heart of this town, and um, I feel kind of special to be a part of it. To me, the word believe uh, really is a mindset. Uh, so to believe in some something or someone uh, highlights the opportunity and the potential that is beyond. And that is really what uh, the high school experience is all about, is you know figuring out who you are, um, being exposed to various different opportunities, um, and get to meet and develop connections with peers, adults, you know, teachers, mentors, uh, that really are going to help you to uh, identify what it is that you believe in in yourself and then you know, where that uh, belief can take you. The word believe has power in itself. If you're going to believe something and truly believe it, that means that you're going to work toward achieving it. So I think um, the word believe has power. I believe I want to be a contractor. I believe in White River Valley High School. I believe I will be a large animal veterinarian. I believe in White River Valley High School. I believe I'm gonna finish high school and go to college to Berkeley. That's it. So there you go. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well produced. Yeah, thanks.
there's a few changes we're going to make. So some of the teachers will have their names and what their title is. On sure, there. like yeah. And the person who helped us with that video is a rock climber, and he fell just recently, broke his elbow and both wrists. So he's not able to make those changes for a bit. So, yeah. I really like that part at the end where you get the students saying kind of what they're working towards. I think that's powerful. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. Superintendent report. So you have my uh, report in hand. I tried to highlight some of the data points that we were sharing with the WRBSU community during the our um, opportunity to engage with the greater community at the Tumbers Fair over the last four days. Shout out uh, to your principals for supporting that effort. And Nancy, thank you very much for um, joining us last week as well. The reason I'm joining you virtually tonight is I had the opportunity to um, join the Agency of Education today and other colleagues from the Winooski Valley Superintendents Region in regards to um, the agency's work around their listening and learning tour. So the three areas that they were looking for feedback on uh, from the field was essentially in regards to academic performance, but also how could the agency provide technical support in regard to continuous improvement. Concerns in regards to uh, how we best support our students via mental health uh, and chronic absenteeism, which aligns to one of your guys' goals, as well as the academic performance piece. And then finally, college and career readiness. So the agency was looking for feedback from the field. Um, in those three areas, there was um, four of us that were able to attend from the supervisory union today to provide some feedback. Just know that they're going to be looking for additional feedback from the greater community via this, these listening and learning tours. And I'll certainly promote when those opportunities come up here in the upcoming months. Uh, and this is all going to go into supporting the agency's strategic plan um, in regards to their next steps as we move forward. So I just wanted to let you know um, in regards to the information they're seeking. You know, I would say to you, one of the things that I'm, I continue to be really optimistic and hopeful about is that the agency of ed um, prior to COVID-19 did have um, opportunities to engage in the field and provide some real support and technical support to helping schools and supervisory unions meet their strategic plan. Um, we did get to partner with them in regards to some of the work we did around our curricular revisions here over the last year and a half. But I would say that those opportunities have been far and few between. And certainly my colleagues and I really voiced um, our desire to see the agency to once again have a, a presence in the field in regards to providing technical support and things like, you know, strategic professional development and things like early literacy and or math work that we're trying to do across the state. So um, I would just wanted to add that to my report. Otherwise, I'll entertain any question folks may have. I do want you to know um, that I am uh, incredibly impressed with our initial three weeks and just the real positive climate that I'm experiencing across our tennis courts. We're really good about um, where we're at as a launch off point and feel really optimistic for a really successful school year. I just want you to know, Calvin, I'm getting really significant feedback as well coming from that you guys there. Julie and Pierre, are you getting that as well? Maybe if you mute us, Calvin, that will help. Or maybe just turn it down. I don't know if you guys want to be muted, but. Uh, you're try turning it down a bit. See if that helps. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. It does appear to be Sounds better. Like better. Okay. Well, it just came back again. But <laughs> do you guys have any questions? Do you have anything for Jamie? Um, I haven't had a chance to really follow along with the uh, 
the Committee on the Future of Public Education. Have, do you have a sense on how that's going so far? No, it, it seems that they're really still kind of getting themselves organized, Andrew. Um, they, they have broken out into subcommittees in regards to finance, um, and they're, they've created a kind of like a leadership style executive committee within the commission um that's that's called their steering committee but you know i would say that what they're really doing right now is doing a data dig right so they've requested a lot of data from the agency i think they're going to be analyzing that data to then make some informed decisions i also think that the finance committee branch of this is going to make some recommendations in regards to um, cost containment for um for sustainability purposes. Um, the other thing I would just mention is, is that I'm gonna be working to try- Sorry, just a second. The volume's out, Jamie. Can you, sorry, we're messing with the audio so we can't hear you right now. Say something now. Oh, uh, that. Not yet. Try now. No, that was worse. Jamie. We're starting. Right. How about now? Try again? Check. Oh, yes. much better. I've always wanted to be a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Jamie, can you rewind about like 30 seconds of what you had been saying? <laughs> Essentially saying that they're really still in, a, they're in their day to day. So I, I haven't seen them take any direction. Certainly, there's been lots of public comment. Um, in regards to concerns around public funds going to support independent schools. I know that there's been a lot of public comment in regards to that. Um, also coming from some of our constituents within our supervisory union. Um, so I appreciate that that voice is, is raising a concern. Um, and then also, you know, what I would say is, is that the governor's letter, which you all received, I did think was a signal to just prepare ourselves that um, the administration plans to continue to speak um, to the greater community about concerns around cost containment. Um, and so, you know, I certainly interpreted that letter um, to be one that was signaling to school boards that this is a warning that we need to try to control cost. And certainly that is something that I think we should expect to be hearing, um, you know, throughout the budget season from the administration. Um, one of the things I was saying is I want to get ahead in our communities to just let them know about some of the things that are uh, forthcoming for us in regards to budget planning, um, which is that, you know, we're expecting right now that health insurance premiums will be an increase of about 18%. At least that's the figure we're going to be using to start until we get a, a firm signal of what, where they're going to land on that. We're basing that off of you know, in regards to what health insurance premiums came down from Blue Cross Blue Shield in the public sector and what we've seen in the past years in regards to it increasing. And then we are in a negotiation year as well. And so just letting folks know that those are some things that we are taking into account as we're budgeting. Um, and so I just want to get some of that information out sooner rather than later, because I think that it behooves us to be as proactive with our communication around our budgeting process as possible. For example, too, to remind folks that we do have a budget calendar and that you'll be receiving your first draft of your student support budget next month. Okay. Anybody have anything else for Jamie? 
Okay, principals. <clears throat> we have a report uh, highlighting in my section. Um, well, it was hard not to add this picture. The food service is doing a love it or leave it challenge this year um, in the lunchroom. Uh, on the menu was corn dogs, and I think the food service did not know how popular corn dogs were going to be, but I think they're going to win the love it challenge and be back on the menu. So anyways, a lot of smiling faces, at least in the elementary, I can't speak for the high school or middle school, voting yes like for it. corn dogs. <laughs> we're in. Uh, but mostly highlighted the kickoff to the school year with our ice cream socials and uh, what we did for in-service to try to build our community, get to know some new teachers. Uh, our section also highlights the classes that teachers are signed up for. So Vermont Fest, which is a real techie, um, techie venue for teachers who are into that. And we have a teacher also signed up for research, design, and education. Uh, the beginning section also just um, highlights that we're in our assessment window and just how we're kicking off the school year with kids and rolling out agreement stations and how we're, what we're highlighting in Wildcat Time, which is the skill of communication, which we'll be working on until November, uh, things like that. Um, the next section for us is just focusing on how we're kicking off the school year with our new Bridges Math program and highlighting some of that. Um, it's going really well. Try to get some pictures of the hands-on learning. I know that my own kiddo came home and was like, I don't think we've done math. Because <laughs> it just feels so different because it's really um, hands-on and not like worksheets and, um, and things like that. So it just feels different to them. Uh, and then just some of the literacy training that's been gonna, going to be happening uh, and has, well, did happen this last half day and um, some coaching that's going to be happening this school year for our three through five team, specifically in alignment with our continuous improvement plan to improve literacy in the three through five grade. <coughs> And last but not least, um, just highlighting that we had every single class in elementary submit something to the Tunbridge Fair. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. So a lot of ribbons. I think we submitted things that weren't actually in a category in some places. So they gave us ribbon because we were original, but uh, it was lovely to walk around and see um, flowers that we have grown here on this campus and uh, zucchini bread that was put together and just, just lots of different things highlighted by each different class. So proud of our kids for that. So look forward to the next next leg of the race, which is our open house and hope you will join us there. And if any of you really wants to be a barbecue master, I'm looking for someone to grill at the Bethel open house. That's my part. Yeah. Good evening, folks. Uh, several good things to celebrate as we kicked off the school year. Uh, we have a lot of um, hope that we'll continue building some choice into our essentials programs, and we're seeing evidence of that from our students. We have a whole host of students working in the shop, the makerspace with art projects, and the artifacts of their creation are all around our school. Simplified Adirondack chairs being produced. Uh, we had students build the tools they needed to start a, even on the boat project. So our first project was building sawhorses, going from prototype with parameter changes. We're having some pretty challenging um, conversations with students about the projects they want to see come to fruition. Um, something we're pretty proud of is we're also making that a space that you can be proud of and the community can be proud of. We're doing a lot of cleaning up, a lot of getting rid of things moving out unused product broken down things making it a campus that you can again be proud of uh, some of the things we have going on in terms of data we started the ela track my progress today we finished the math last week so we look forward to diving into that data in the immediate future with our data teams currently we're looking at more of the bt cap data and ensuring our tip plans are in place so work is moving forward I think we had planned intentionally enough for uh, enough things so that we can deal with the curveballs we've been thrown. The climate seems like it's moving in the right direction. And we are uh, very early in the school year as we've established a routine of community meetings, bringing people together when we have important things to address, uh, including one that's gonna happen this Friday, talking very directly about um, examples of, of hate speech, of uh, hazing harassment things that we just have zero tolerance for so setting the expectations um 
I do appreciate that my students notice the elementary students going through the expectation stations as the elementary school is teaching behaviors and, and um, procedures. They started commenting on it and it gave a great uh, seed for conversation. Last thing I'd like to add that's not in the report is we are expanding the ways we're reaching out to students that we were having trouble with uh, engaging. I want to thank our IT department for ensuring that a family had some internet access to get connected with VTVLC. We are incorporating students from all over Southern Vermont now into uh, our school as a hub for other VTVLC access. So we're expanding access and opportunities for students and it's nice to see those um, plans starting to come to fruition. Thank you. And for the high school, so I'm excited to announce that John Rhodes is our um, community-based learning uh, director. And since he's been on board only a short time, he's had uh, five students starting work in, in the community. So that's pretty exciting. Um, John just took the ball and ran with it, which is outstanding. I think being affiliated with the town and knowing a lot of people have really helped his success. Our SAP counselor, um, Michelle Scott, has just been doing an outstanding job of making connections throughout the school as well. Um, this is an exciting time of year in the beginning of the school year so that we can start working with students to track their road to graduation. And it's kind of interesting, not every road is the same. There's a lot of dirt roads that we've been traveling and it's exciting, right, to, to map that out with each student. Um, and I think that's just the exciting thing about our flexible pathways. And last, uh, you know, so three of my goals this year were for students to not skip class. I think that was a problem last year, and I don't think we had a good handle on it. We have a process now, and our secretaries are doing a good job of keeping in line with that. Um, we had one skip in, thus far, and the student was seeing a counselor at the time. So that was, uh, he just didn't do the correct thing by checking in with the teacher at, at first. I am our on time to class. Um, it's three in a detention. That's the, and you get a warning, uh, uh, email sent to you when you are late to a class. And that's been, I'm in the hallways when the bell rings, I run out of my office to go down the hall. And there's like, when that second bell rings, the late bell rings, it's a ghost town now in the hallway, which is great, you know. Um, and then our phone use. Um, I know there's been a lot of controversy in the news and stuff about phone use and policies have changed and this and that. Our policy really hasn't changed much. It's the same, we're just kind of enforcing that. And one of the things is we have phone booths now where you put your phone in and uh, kids leave it in there and then at the end of the period they pick it up. And it's been pretty successful. I've only had to confiscate two phones, I think, and I might have to confiscate that one. Yeah. <laughs> Good timing, Peg. I appreciate you doing that. Um, and so, well uh, so the I, the Valley News called about phone uses, and they're trying to make a big uh, story about it. And so, the story I have is the one phone I had on my office. It just, I mean, buzz, 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 buzz the whole time. And I was thinking, how can kids focus on their class when that thing is doing that the whole time? I couldn't even focus on my work. I had to put it in my desk so I couldn't hear it. So I think it's really been a, a really good tool. Um, I mean, Hannah might object to that, but no, <laughs> she's here to, and she's going to talk about our community. So. Yeah. Um, so we had a good kickoff to the school year on August 28th with our ninth grade orientation, just to kind of get them acclimated to our rules, our schedules, all our teachers as well. And then the rest of the high school had their first day the following day. Um, again, everyone just kind of got used to their schedules, people in the school, stuff like that. And then we also began our sporting events. And so our first cross-country meet was September 7th at VTC. Our first boys' soccer game was August 31st against West Rutland. And then our girls on August 30th against Windsor. And then first bass fishing meet, which I'm not sure where it was, but they had their first one. Um, then also first golf match, which was in Woodstock on September 4th. And then also we have our homecoming coming up, which we have a dance on 927. And then we have soccer games the afternoon of that Saturday, as well as a bonfire put on and put together by the seniors. Um, then we'll have our open house October 2nd, which is an opportunity for adults to come to the school, talk to teachers, see where their kids are learning. And yeah, and then also the seniors. This year are taking part in a capstone project, which is like a pa uh, passion project, um, which seems to be really exciting. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome. All right. Um, 
Julie, did I see your hand go up earlier? Yeah, thanks. I don't remember what the acronym is for the online schooling, but what kind of staffing does that take? I don't know much about that program. BTVLC? BT, yeah. Go ahead, Jamie. Thanks. Oh, Jamie? Jamie? Yeah, Julie, so we've partnered as a supervisory union to be CDP schools. So VTVLC provides complete staffing for students that attend total virtual online. The way it works is, is that it could be a student from us, but it could be a student from a school choice district. They register us, they pay full tuition, and the cost for them to attend VTVLC is 5,000 years, $2,500 a semester. And what we provide is, is extracurricular opportunities for students. We, they are our students. So we check in with VTVLC on a biweekly basis and, and make certain that if, if this is not working for the students, setting up student support meetings, things of that nature. Um, but in addition to that, we also do offer online courses for students who want to do that as part of their pathway through us, meaning they may want <coughs> one or two courses. And we do have a high school teacher, Lisa Berg, who does teach a section of VTVLC, which opens some seats up for us in order for our students to do that um, at the middle and high school. So Jamie, I would say, I would say mostly Jamie, it's our uh, counselor, Alex and uh, Ben Boynton that are involved with that mostly. Any other questions for the principals or Anna? Yeah, did we win a lot of that stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> he listed a whole bunch of stuff. I was like, but did we win a lot of it? Doesn't matter if we yeah, did or lose. It's how yeah. we played the game. How we represent. That's right. <laughs> I prefer to win. <laughs> Your 3 4 soccer team oh. beat first branch tonight. Yeah. That's all that matters. <laughs> All right, uh, Tara, you're up. So you all have my report. Uh, what's happening in the business office, the biggest thing, obviously, is my auditors are here this week. We are doing fiscal year 24 audit. So on that note, I need two volunteers to do our annual fraud inquiries of governance questionnaires. Who wants to do it? It's only two pages. Could do that. Yeah, well, the finance committee it, members can do it. Is it anything that I would know anything about? Or you would just answer honestly. honestly. If you don't you know, just put, I honestly don't know. know. <laughs> well, if nobody else wants to, I'll do it. Perfect. If you can have one done by October 1st, How that about would tonight? be great. That works, too. Um, you can either email them to Ellen, or you can drop them off here, um, and then they can inter-office them over to us, and then she gets them to the auditors. I'd be happy to help if you need someone else. I don't know if you passed them both out, but I can do one too. Uh, Nancy and Peggy took them. Thank you, Julie. All right. Um, policy committee update. Unless anybody has anything to do, Did we lose Rodney? I think we did. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to jump in for him. Um, in regards to policies B5 and C12, we had a B5 policy that was attempted to be all encompassing to also ad address sexual harassment as provided via Title IX. Um, and it, it, it was not effective policy. It was, it was adopted in 18. So we have been working as a policy committee to have a revised policy of B5 and an introduction of C12 um, essentially since last January, we were held up a bit, uh, waiting for, uh, what we expected to be new regs to come out. Uh, those regs did come out for title nine. They've been challenged in multiple courts across the country. So our policy committee met with legal counsel, um, and Visbit legal counsel, and also who has served as our legal counsel for some policy work specific to personnel policies, um, Pietro and Heather Lynn. And they met and the policy committee moved the two policies you have in front of you out tonight. These are what our insurance company, Visbit, and legal counsel are recommended 
uh, in regards to us adopting as of right now. Um, to get on the books, <laughs> hope to get readings on these in the this coming month, and that we're going to be ready to warn for action starting in October, um, because our current B five policy that we have on the books um, is it it just needs to be revised. It, it it's not serving our school community in the way that it that it should be. Um, and so we've known that we wanted to address B5 for a while. So what you have here now is a standalone Title IX policy and a revised B5 for unlawful workplace harassment. And of course, we continue to have our HHB policy. That's in alignment with the model policy for the state. Okay, so everybody make sure that you get a read through and Provide any feedback to Jamie or Rodney or me or somebody if you have feedback. All right. Um, community Engagement Task Force Committee updates. Um, at this point, uh, we've gotten a lot of the data back from the family survey. Um, and if there's anybody out there who hasn't filled that out, who has. Um, please do so because we want to hear from as many people as possible. Um, we put that out um, kind of a second reminder and got a lot more responses. The community survey, um, there's a mailer that's going to the printers um, that's going to be going out. And once that goes out, we'll be sending out um, on various platforms uh, to try and get people to respond to the community survey. and that. That survey is more focused on voting and school board issues and, you know, kind of community focused side of uh, side of the school um, things. So um, we're still collecting data, but the, we've also started um, the process of getting the report together um, and figuring out how that's going to look. So. Um, there's a meeting on Thursday that'll be talking more about that and kind of dividing up responsibilities for getting the report ready and hopefully we'll have that for October. Um, but might might need a little extra time since the community survey is just going out in the next couple of days. So that's what's going on with the community engagement task force. Anything I missed, Nancy? Or Peggy? Okay. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of, lot of really good feedback from the family survey, and um, so I think it's been interesting to see the kind of responses, and, and that seems like there's kind of pent-up demand for this kind of engagement, so. Um, all right, unless there's any questions on that, we'll move on to the 9-1, consideration and approval of resolution ballot warning and bond vote at White River Unified District School. So, Tara. Oh, so, we, Calvin, you have those in email. That it, that was sent this afternoon. So, if you could pull oh. those up. And Tara, I did share them all with the board as oh, okay. well. Perfect. The only one they haven't seen is the revised um, warning that it also included Peggy's name on it. Okay. So but they have seen everything else, including the time change one. Okay. <clears throat> so. It's going to be the resolution is the name of it. Okay. Um, to pull that one up. That's the only change then. So these are written by legal counsel. They are very specific. We It's governed by statute what has to be in and exactly how these are worded. So basically we can't make any changes unless we find <laughs> like an absolute error in information. That's really the only thing that we can change. Um, if you're good with them, you just need to make a motion to accept them. I have, I have the uh, papers here so that you can sign them tonight. And a copy of the, you've already seen the ballot, which we'll right. go, we'll make and then get it to the town clerks. So I assume the state funds may not be available. That's all. That required. has to be there. That's, yes, you can't take required. any of that out, Andrew. That is funny, <laughs> just because like we yep. never asked. <laughs> yeah. So no, it has to be there. All right. The other thing the board just needs to know, and I've worked with your t the town clerks 
already we're, we're going to get these have to be posted in five locations in each town and then we do have to warn that we have to put the warning in your um identified papers your designated papers three straight what we will do is, is our is three straight thursdays leading up to the vote <coughs> okay um so I guess at this point we should uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept these unless anybody has any comments or I'll, I'll motion to accept these as written. Do you need specific language? No. Okay. All right. Any uh, anybody second? I'll second it. Okay. We'll do a roll call vote on this. Uh, Nancy. Yes. Except. Um, well, I, I should have said any discussion before we start voting. I thought I saw a grammatical error in one of them, just a left out word, and now I can't find it. I'm looking down. So it probably wasn't important. <laughs> um, if we find a grammatical error, is that something we can fix later? Just let me know. I think it was a left out word. I think it, there was supposed to be an A or an AND somewhere. And, and, Okay. I should have made a note of it. All right. Well, the uh, motion is on the table. Um, we'll do the roll call. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Okay. I've, I've Peggy? It. Yep. Ed? Aye. Julie? Yes. Okay. I'm and I as well. So we have approved those, the resolution ballot and morning for the bond vote. Um, so you just need us to sign at this point. Yeah, when you're ready. And at the end of the meeting, you can just sign us. We can do that before we leave. All right. Um, so now on to discussing um, <coughs> the upcoming informational meetings and other important dates prior to the November bond vote. Um, so we have one informational meeting um, at this campus on October 30th. Um, we should schedule a second one at least um, on the Bethel campus, and then um, we also need to do a lot of outreach because I think we need to make sure we get the word out as much as possible um, to uh, make sure people know what we're voting on. Um, so is there a time that would work for people for doing a second informational meeting um, in Bethel, probably, I don't know, you want to say like two weeks before or, um, so let's see, so the 30th is that, I don't know, we could do it earlier than that just to try and get all our ducks in a row, like sometimes having those meetings makes it so that we make sure that we have a presentation for it and all the, everything actually happens and Mm -hmm. We could get a video out and, and disseminate that. Um, Would the 24th work just because it's a different night in case somebody just Wednesday nights don't work? Oh. It was just a, that was my one thought. Like if we warn one on a Wednesday, some folks might not be able to do Wednesday, but they could do Thursdays. Um, and I was also curious if you might want to do start one at like six instead of seven, where some folks might not seven might be too late for some folks. I was just thinking about access, like if we're going to, you know, how do we change it up a little bit? Um, well, I've got a coaching a soccer game that'll be until probably 6.30 on that night, but it's in Bethel, so I could start then. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, if we wanted to do that night. Yeah, 24th. Sure. Works for me. All right. Um, all right, so we'll plan on the 24th at 6.30. Um, do we want to do something a little earlier as well or just uh, try and communicate out 
um, via other means prior to that. And we also have our <coughs> regular school board meeting on the 15th as well. Do we still have uh, like the boosters doing the poster at events kind of thing? Going on? Uh, the music boosters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, they are putting together a fundraising platform that they're trying to raise additional funds um, for the projects as well through that. So, um, yeah, I guess we could just try and uh, piggyback on school events. You know, there'll be the open house, elementary open house on the 26th in, in South Road. And I'm not sure when, I think there's a middle school open house as well at some point. What, the 26th is the same night? 25th and 26th. 25th and 26th, okay. Right. Um, so we could just try and piggyback on those and not have, like, formal presentations, but... Um, yeah, will there be an opportunity at those open houses where everybody's going to be a captive audience, say, in the gym? There is for the high school, because the con there's a concert at 7. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a time right before when everyone's seated. There's a less opportunity, but I think we could bring up, okay, so we have a speaker system and people are eating at the elementary ones in advance, so I think we could potentially capture them for a few minutes. We have the speaker system outside. Yeah, I would think that would have to be pretty short. Yeah, yeah quick and dirty. Or you could just invite them for after, right? Uh, and maybe we could get them come and sit after they've eaten and gone and seen their kids' rooms, and then, mm -hmm. I think by then you're ready to go home. It's, I, I, yeah, it's not yeah. easy I'm thinking way. more like a really quick advertisement type thing for the info meetings to try to get people sure. to come to the informational meetings so it could be more in depth there. I don't, I don't think, you know, that we want to try to, you know, spend 10 minutes on them, but just, you know, quick, one minute, hey, this is happening, and we really would love to see you at the informational meeting, and we really would like to see your vote, you vote, or whatever, I don't know, some, some kind of rah-rah. Could we show the video, like at the high school open house, maybe? That they... I also think when we did the merger, the board put together, or the people on the merger committee put together just a, a video specific to the merger. I wonder about just putting a, a board-specific video that could go out on Facebook and about the bond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that will get more shares and more plays. And Right. Um, all right. This, I feel like this is the kind of stuff we can talk about outside of a board meeting without quorum issues because it's information for the public, right? So... Yeah, I, I would not be comfortable if you were all commenting on the same documents still. But certainly with a board of six, you can have side conversations in regards to this and certainly can plan agendas and things in regards to prepare for the meeting. The other thing I would offer is, is an idea. If there was a couple board members interested in working on information and the promotion and things of the upcoming vote, if you wanted to get two of you or even three of you together to do that, just know that Kate McLean and our community school coordinator, Mary Shell are, are waiting to see who, who to work with. I think, you know, certainly the music boosters are interested in supporting that work too. But if a couple of you wanted to just say like, you're going to take some lead and then we can share that information out with the rest of the board. If there's any feedback, for example, on postcards, on flyers, you know, I like I said before, I think some question and answer documents like what we created after the, after the approved budget would go a long ways. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I've already got some stuff written up and we have the slides from the last time we did an informational mm -hmm. meeting. So we have some stuff already started. 
Um, is there anybody who'd be interested in joining with me on developing that further and kind of coming up with a, a plan? We can make sort of a ad hoc subcommittee, I guess, for promoting this. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested. Okay. <laughs> All right. Was that Nancy? Yes. Great. I will get an email out tomorrow morning, Andrew, linking Nancy, Mary, Kate, and you together. Like I said, Kate has been asking me about this for a while. A press release will go out saying that you took action tonight on uh, moving forward with a bond vote and the specifics around the bond vote. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, do you want anything from us for that press release, or is it just going to be the bare bones of? Really, it, the, Kate worked with the music boosters to develop it initially, so I think it's good for now. My The hope would be, of course, with the press release, then they'll inquire, and certainly we will direct them to appropriate parties, meaning, meaning the media. And I know Liz is on the call tonight as well from the Valley News. So I expect more articles to be forthcoming. I would just, you know, make sure whatever we're putting out, you know, I think we're trying to present this. It's the Performing Arts Center is one piece of the overall project, right? So, you know, I think a lot of our communication prior, earlier, to the previous kind of informational meeting was a lot just performing arts center focused, but you know, make sure whatever that is mm -hmm. has the totality of the project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comments on that? Then uh, we've already done the consideration and approval of the resolution ballot warning, so that's already set. Any public comment? <coughs> uh, new hires resignations? I had a resignation in the uh, Bethel Elementary Preschool. Chilia, who has been our preschool aide, has decided to stay home with her baby. So we're happy for her, sad for us. And I told her to come back to us when she's done raising her babies. So mm -hmm. we'll be looking for a preschool parent in Bethel. Okay. All right, do you have enough to We got this. She's been covered for now, so anyway, we, we're going to eke through. We got this. <laughs> All right. Okay. So and then Jeff mentioned John Rhodes was hired for our, our work-based learning coordinator position. Right, and I, I probably should mention Liz Ray was hired for our English teacher, um, uh, Daniel Clayton. So Jeff and Danielle moved to Nantucket right at the start of school. So that was kind of a, a quick change about, but we got it done. Yeah. And okay. this was an English teacher for us two years ago. Okay. Uh, we don't have any other uh, future agenda items. I mean, I think we'll have, uh, certainly at the next meeting, we'll have an update on the um, Community Engagement Task Force results, where we're at with that and um, hopefully a report, but, um, and then the building projects with bond upcoming will certainly be on the agenda. Does anybody have anything else they would like to include on the agenda? Student support draft one. Student we'll support draft month. one. Your academic data reports for both um, BTCAP and track my progress will be on your October agenda. Okay. All right, our next meeting date is Tuesday, October 15th, 7 p.m. at the Bethel campus. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, so